Jesus washed my sins away. 
grab our Bible, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 18. I want to thank you for your involvement in the house of the Lord, and your giving, and your heart, your love for God's work. 1 Samuel chapter 18, we're looking forward for a great faith promise. I look forward to seeing you back tonight for the evening service. And try your best to come to all the nights of the Faith Promise Conference. Friday night will be our banquet night. We're going to have a wonderful time. And we're looking forward to seeing what the Lord will do uh, through you this year. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14 to 16. Please, out of respect in reading God's word, let's all stand. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14 through 16. I'll read the first verse alone, and you'll read the second two verses with me. Ready? It says, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Verse 15. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. 16 together also. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. Let's have a word of prayer as I preach this morning. Behaving wisely. Behaving wisely. Our Father, we are thankful we can come to your house and we can serve you. We can honor you and lift you up here. Yes. And I thank you for the obedience of your people. Yes, yes. I thank you for hearing their commitments, their love for your work. They just don't want to be a part of a church. They want to be involved in the church. I thank you for providing for them and blessing them. And Lord, you gave me this message for your people this morning. As I preach it, give me wisdom, knowledge, discernment, and understanding. And I pray, Lord, that you fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I pray everyone will receive your word with humble hearts. Use your word to accomplish your will, your purpose in every one of our lives. And if there's one not saved today, I pray they'll come to know you as their Savior. Help and work in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning, behaving wisely. As we come to chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, I am, if you're new, I'm preaching on the book of 4 Samuel. We're going chapter by chapter. Some chapters are taking a couple of services, but we're moving from chapter to chapter. We're now in chapter 18 of 4 Samuel. As we come across this chapter, we come across a behavior that is extraordinary. It's amazing. This behavior is a wonderful thing to see. And I want to talk about this. This behavior is only found in this chapter. And God put it here because it's something we all ought to carry ourselves in. It's an extraordinary behavior. Hear me? This behavior, it is the behavior to carry yourself wisely under difficult circumstances. This is a behavior, behaving wisely means to carry yourself wisely under difficult circumstances. Normally, now hear me, normally we don't get out of control all the time. Most of our days, most of our time in our days is not out of control. We are not out of control people every second of the day. Most of the time when we get out of control, it is when we are under difficult circumstances. When we are being attacked by people. When we hear a hurtful word. When we hear somebody ask us something we don't want them to ask us. When we, when we uh, become full of pride and we want to boast and show off, we get out of control. Being out of control is not done all through the day. It is mostly done under pressure or when we're full of pride. Folks, it is easy to behave wisely when everything is going all right. Amen. It's easy to smile. That's it's right. easy to be kind. It's easy to do right when everything is going okay. But, but when we're under pressure, when we are asked questions, when we are told to do certain things, we don't want to hear these things. We don't want to hear what we're being told to do. We don't want to be corrected. We don't want to be reproved. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. We're full of pride. Or somebody might tell us something hurtful or they might be attacking us. When these kind of actions attack us the very first thing you want to do is become angry when you become angry you get out of control you become for very first reaction is we want to become angry this behavior end up leading us to regrets it end up leading us to hurtful words and to even behave foolishly listen to me if we're not behaving wisely in an area then tell me how are we behaving Amen. we're behaving foolishly if we're not doing right when we're supposed to do right that means we're not behaving wisely in the will of God and according to the word of God we're behaving foolishly and God tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 18 this is an area you don't want to behave in you ought to want to behave wisely all the time yeah, in every situation especially when you're under pressure yeah, can a christian behave wisely in a simple world yeah. can a christian behave wisely yeah. under very difficult circumstances yeah. even if it is from the attacks of other sinful people Yes, they can. Amen, amen. This chapter shows us clearly that behaving wisely can be done under any situation, even under the attacks from evil believers or behaviors of other people. To behave wisely, it means this. To behave wisely is to restrain. You want to act a certain way, but I'm going to restrain that behavior and act the way God wants me to act. Amen. 
Um, to behave wisely is not only to mean restrain, it means to govern. Who is in control of your behavior? Reach it. Reach it. Your feelings or you? Or the word of God? Well said. Amen. To behave wisely means I am in control under the Holy Spirit. That means if I feel I should behave a certain way and it's not according to the word of God, it's not a way I'm supposed to behave, I am going to govern myself under the word of God. That is to behave wisely. It means to subdue. What does God want me to do? Does God want me to obey, hear, or disobey? What does God want me to do? I'm going to submit to God's word. It is to conduct yourself well and carry yourself manfully. In other words, to behave wisely means I am going to conduct myself well. I'm going to have proper manners. I'm going to have proper ethics. I'm going to do things the right way. But not only that, it means also I'm going to be the man or the woman that you're supposed to be. I am going to act maturely. I'm going to be responsible. If I know I'm supposed to do something, I am going to do it. I, I, I have something to do. I have work to do for the Lord. I'm going to do it. To, to behave wisely means I'm going to mature. I'm going to act in a mature way in my responsibilities that I have. So, hear me. To behave wisely is to control yourself in any situation, no matter the pressure, so that you don't fall into sin, but prosper in the will of God. Now when I say behave wisely, we're not only talking about your attitude. We're talking about in every situation. Maybe you're being pressured to fall into sin. Maybe your friends are telling you, watch this, or smoke this, or drink this. Or hopefully you're not the one who's pressuring people oh, yeah, sorry. to do those kind of things. But you, you're not going to listen to their temptation. You're not going to uh, follow their pressure. You're not going to let their pressure make you behave foolishly. You're going to behave wisely. You're going to realize that these things are wrong. You're going to turn away from this kind of behavior. Turn away from these kind of friends and follow the will of God. Amen. That is to behave wisely. Four times it is mentioned that David behaved himself wisely in three difficult circumstances in this chapter. Let's look at least at one of them this morning. Number one, behaving wisely in our duties. Behaving wisely in our duties. Look at verse 5. 1 Samuel 18, 5. You can't see it on the screen. Look in your Bible. And David went whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Now hear me. After David killed Goliath, he was very much like my King Saul. He was then asked to live in the palace. Saul said, I don't want you to go home to your father anymore. I don't want you looking after sheep. I want you living in the palace. You have done something no man wanted to do. David behaved himself wisely. He manned up himself. He acted maturely. When most people are acting immaturely, falling into sin, falling into temptation, falling away from the will of God, here was a young man that said, I'm going to act maturely. I'm going to do what God's word tells me to do. And he behaved himself wisely. Amen. And Saul said, I like this young man. I want you living in the palace. You fought Goliath. I want you to marry one of my daughter and daughters. I, I want you to be my son-in-law. I want you to lead up a portion of men in, this, in, in the war. And so Saul loved David, but Saul also took advantage over David. Uh, let's look at why God said David behaved himself wisely. Look at verse 5 again. Look at verse 5. Let's see 
why God said David behave himself wisely. Look what it says. <clears throat> and David went whithersoever Saul sent him. Here, now look this way. Everybody see there? Yeah. Everywhere Saul sends David, David goes. That's behaving wisely. Let me, let me explain a little bit how hard this was. David goes anywhere Saul sends him to be sent out all the time and then to fulfill what you're being sent out to do and do it every time with the best behavior is what we call behaving wisely. I used to hate when my mother asked me to go to the shop. Go buy this. Sometimes I gotta buy the wrong thing because they don't explain the, chick, the, the cubes come in two types, beef and chicken. So I go into the shop asking for cubes. Which one? Um, just give me any one. I want to draw cube, just give me any one. They give me beef. My, my mom don't need that. So I go home with beef cubes now, and she said, this is not what I want. Go back to the shop and tell them this is not what you, I want. I want chicken cubes. <laughs> So I have to take that now, embarrassed that I bought the wrong thing. We always are embarrassed when we bought the wrong thing. Yes, and we go back now and I said, you don't want chick beef cube and the people are vexed. <laughs> They're not vexed with her because she's not the one buying it. Next time, find out properly <laughs> what you want. Then come, we can't be exchanging these things all the time. I used to hate doing that. But you know what? Saul sends David. David comes in, he lives in the palace. Saul said, I want you to go and fight this battle for me. David goes out, fights the battle, wins the war, comes back. Saul said, wait, I have an extra for you. Go out and fight this other battle in, the, in this area. And David says, okay, I'm gonna go. And he goes out and fights the next battle. He comes in back. Saul says, we have a garrison of Philistines on this area, go out and fight that. And David says, okay, and he goes out and fights the next battle. Do you know how hard that was? Do you know how hard it was that every time you came back, you had to be gone out back again? And battles were not a day. You don't go out a day and fight the battle and come back home. There is no much proper transportation. So when you go, you have to take this long journey to wherever you're going. It takes several days, some weeks, some months. So you come back after being on the field, in the heat, uh, in all this turmoil, in killing, in, in defeating, bloodshed. You come back and you send again for the next trip. And then you come back and you send again, and you send again, and you send again. And hear me, everywhere Saul sends David, every time he sends David, David says, okay, I'm going to go. In other words, he goes with the best attitude. Amen. He does not say, Oh, son, I'm really tired. Please, is there nobody else? No. He says, Saul, I want to go. Send me. Where? How far is it? No problem. I'm going to go. And Saul looked at this young man. And he came up with a conclusion that no matter how much he pressured him to be sent out on these trips, in these wars, David always had the right attitude and said, no problem, I'm gonna go. How far, where, how much, how hard is it? I'm gonna go, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it, God is gonna help me. That's the best attitude. Sometimes our Amen. parents ask us to wash the wares and we fret. <laughs> hey, that's not wise behavior. Amen. Amen. Sometimes our parents ask us to clean the room and we're supposed to do that. And you know, how far is the room from, your, from, from where your mom is asking you? How hard is that trip to go from the living room to the room? Amen. And who messed up the room anyways? And we have a sulky behavior with it. Sometimes we ask about coming to church. 
And people are so keen about, oh, I have to come to church. Wow. What do you mean? Every week? Yeah. Every service? You want me to come back again tonight? We behave like obeying God. We behave with the attitude that obeying God is the worst thing we can do. Wow. It's something hard. It's, it's something difficult. David says, Sir, send me anywhere. Tell me where to go. He obeyed the king. How hard it was, it didn't matter. How difficult it was, it didn't matter. How, how far it was, it didn't matter. David, in, in the presence of Saul, had the best attitude. And when he moved away, here's the thing now. Here's how we operate. We show a nice face to the person who's asking us what to do and where to go. No problem, no problem, I have no problem with that. Then we go back home, or we go and meet one of our friends and say, Pastor always asking me to do this. Why can't he find somebody else? My mom always bothering me to clean the room. Why can't she just leave me alone? People in the church always bothering me to come to church. Why can't they go find somebody else? Don't they know I need some break? In front of our face, we act like if it's okay. I have no problem what you're asking me to do. Then behind our back in front of other people, we're sulky. We have a bad attitude. As if what we were asking you to do is something terrible. It's something that you did not want to do. This is not behaving wisely. Behaving wisely is whoever asks you to do something, that is right to do, you have a good attitude, do it. And then after you tell them, no problem, I want to do it. Yes. Then in front of everybody else, you show a good attitude yes. that I want to do it. Yes. What the pastor asked me, what my mom asked me, whoever asked me, I want to do it. I'm gonna smile doing it, I'm gonna enjoy doing it, and I'm not gonna show. A foolish behavior. Amen. This is to act in this way. To act nice in front of one and act terrible in the other is the sign of a carnal, fleshly behavior. Amen. It's not behaving wisely, it's behaving foolishly. Um, hear me. Do you know what employers like? And a person who wants to work every day. And every day they show up to work, they show up with the attitude that I want to work. Good. An employer likes that. An employer does not want to hire somebody to work for them, and they don't like it. <laughs> you don't give a good spirit yeah. in that workplace. An employer sees a person comes in, and every day they enjoy the work. I worked five years for a supermarket. I remember one time they were given badges to wear, to come to work with. And people didn't want to wear it. So one day, my boss, as the people were leaving the place to go home, he collected everybody's badges. And he collected because the next day when they come back to work now, they'll have their badge to wear in the workplace. So people can, the customers can identify that these are workers here, you can ask them what to do. And he saw me coming out, and I had my badge, and my shirt to tie, I was dressed sharp to go to work. And, and he saw me wearing the badge, and he says, I don't need to collect the badge from you. Yeah. You, you go home with your badge, yeah. I know you'll come to work tomorrow with your badge. Yeah. And he said, and I said, yes, I love working here. I love doing my work. And, and we, ought to, we ought to love what we're doing. Amen. We ought to enjoy it. And we ought to, come, we ought to go to work with the best attitude every day. Amen. We ought to come to church with the right attitude Amen. all the time. We ought to, whatever we are asked to do, Preach it. Preach it. we ought to be sincere in it. We ought to be liking what we're asked to do, especially if it's God's work, Amen. in front of whoever's asking you and behind.
behind the back of anybody else who's watching you what you're told to do. This is behaving wisely. That's why God said to David, this man is behaving wisely. And let me write that in the scripture. Amen. Now, there are two types of duty. Remember, the point number one, behaving wisely in our duties. There are two types of duty. There are the duty, there, those that are, there are duties that are dispensable duties, and there are those that are indispensable duties. Let me explain what that is. There are two types of duties. Dispensable duties and indispensable duties. Dispensable duties we obey and do every time except when it conflicts the word of God. I, uh, my job, I'm asked, if I have a job, I know I'm supposed to work from Monday to Saturday. But if my job, now I'm supposed to do that, that's my duty. Everybody's supposed, if, if you're age, if you're done with school, you're supposed to be working. You're supposed to have a job. Whether it's at your house or it's outside of your house, you're supposed to be making money. Why? Two reasons. Number one, you're supposed to be making money to invest in the Lord's work. Amen. Everybody's supposed to have money to invest in God's work. If, you have, if you're working for money and you have nothing to invest in God's work, your motives and intentions is totally wrong. Amen. Amen. Number two, you have to work to take care of your family. Amen. Take care of your home. Number priority, invest in God's work. Number two, take care of your family. You see me, I come here, anything this church wants, I'm going to volunteer to give to God's house. I'm going to take care of my family too. Uh, I'm going to balance both. Because that's why I'm working. I'm working, number one, to give to God. Number two, to take care of my family. And everybody's supposed to be working for that purpose. If you're a single person and you live with your family, work to take care of your family. Take a portion of your money and give it to your family. My wife worked for one year. And thank God she worked that year because that's where I met her. Yeah. Her entire salary went to her parents. Amen. Amen. Every time she got paid, every month, she took, and then we got paid every two weeks, she took her entire salary. Now that's before I met her, when she married me now. That's right. Her entire salary comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but her entire salary went to her parents. And her parents would take the money and split it up to pay expenses in the home. Amen. 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 Take care of expenses in the home. Then they would give her a portion of money for her to go to work with. If she misspend that, that's her problem. If she has enough money to go to work with, catch transportation, buy food, whatever it is, she runs out to that money, there's no more to get. That's her problem. My wife don't look like if she has needs. Amen? Amen. She don't look that way. She looks like whatever she did in that one year, God is returning it back to her. Amen. And sometimes we think, if I take this money, and I tell you, a lot of young people don't know how to handle money. Preach it. And a lot of young people should That's come right. to me or Brother Boudreaux here That's right. and say, Pastor, I work for $10,000 a week. Amen. Can you help me use this money wisely? Amen. We don't do that. Amen. We take our money and we, we squander it. Well, you should see the phones Amen. that some of our young people have. Amen. And they can't buy a yard of building. Amen. You should see the clothes they wear. You should see the food they buy. You should Amen. see what they do for their friends. And they can't invest in God's work. Not just this church now I'm talking about. They can't even help out their own home. Amen. That's right. And they live there. And that's nobody's fault but the parents. Amen. Amen. I have six children. Boy, I tell you, when I reach a certain age, for a few years, I'm going to be well off. I won't have to worry about light bill, phone bill. Amen. And then, 
By the time they're ready to move out and go out the house, hopefully I get back the next job to take care of the bills. But I'm going to teach them. Amen. I'm going to teach them how to use money. Amen. I'm going to teach them how they need to help out in the home. And that's why young people don't help out in the home. Then they get married. They have a spouse now. And they don't even know how to take care of their own home. Amen. And they run to mommy and daddy. Things hard. Things obviously is hard. Because you don't know how to use money. Amen. You are a waste. You, I'm sorry, you're waste, I'm, you're not a waste, but you're wasting the money. That's right. And you know who gave you that money? God! Amen. And you will be held accountable for that. I want you to know that. Amen. Every dollar God gives you at your job, you will be held accountable for it. Because you're supposed to use it wisely. Remember God says, everything I give you, you're supposed to use it to honor me. Amen. God will hold you accountable Amen. for it. You know you can help your family and you don't help them. You know you can invest in God's work and you don't do it. You were the one who's going to have a hard life trying to get things done in life. Amen. I'm almost done. Don't worry. There are some duties. Hey, I was telling you. I have a job. If my job asks me to work six days a week from Monday to Saturday, if they only ask me to work Sunday... What do I do? My duty is to work. I'm talking about dispensable duties here now. My duty is to work. If, I, if they ask me to disobey God and work Sunday, what do I do? That's right. I break that duty. Preach it. It's a dispensable duty. I'm not bound to it. That job don't own me. Amen. They don't own me. That's God right. owns me. Amen. Amen. So, if they ask me to break God's word and commandments to work Sunday, it's no! Amen. But then they are indispensable duties. I'm sorry, you can't see it on the screen. But they are indispensable duties. These are duties that are never to disobey. You don't ever break these. These are things you're asked to do and you don't ever say, maybe some other time. We never break these. We always keep them. Obviously, you know what these duties are. These are the duties to obey God's word. Amen. Hear me. <clears throat> we are never to disobey God, but to do whatever he says, go wherever he sends, and give whatever he tells us. Look at, uh, you can't look at it, but, oh, you can look at your Bible. I'm sorry. You don't have to look at the screen. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. I'm going to read it quickly for you because I just want to finish this off and we're going to close off here now. <laughs> hear me. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Amen. Fear God and keep His commandments. Amen. For this is the whole duty of man. Amen. Hear me. Look this way now. The duty of every Christian is an indispensable duty. You are asked to obey God. And that action to obey God is never to be broken. Amen. You are always told to obey God. If a man asks you to do something, I, I, I'm supposed to obey. But if it goes against God's word, I'm not going to listen to that. Amen. That's a dispensable duty. But the indispensable duties are never to be broken. We ought always to be in church. Amen. We ought always to tithe. We ought always to give to missions. We ought always to win souls. We ought always to honor God. Amen. We ought always to be thankful. We ought always to be praying. We ought always to be reading God's word. We ought always to be fasting regularly. I tell you, there are some things we ought to do all the time and never to be broken. Amen. Amen. They are indispensable duties. But then there are some that can be broken if they go against God's word. Um, this, this behavior, hear me? When, 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 when people ask us to break God's word, and we say no, but we rather obey God rather than anybody else. Tell me what kind of behavior is that? 
That's behaving wisely. Praise the Lord. And you tell me the opposite. Amen. You say, preacher, it cannot be done. First Samuel 18 tells us it can be done. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I can obey God. I can do that which is right. Yes. I can behave wisely and obey God in everything He tells me to do. Um, now, David did not just do and go wherever Saul sent him, but David obeyed every time with the most willing attitude. Every time Saul sends him away, David had the most willing attitude. No problem. I want to go. I want to do right. I want to fulfill my duties to you, Saul. And when he's in front of Saul's servants, if you look at verse 5, the Bible says, Saul's servants and the people like David. Why? Because he was not a hypocrite. He didn't show a nice face to Saul and then behind Saul's back, this man always asked me to fight the battle that he's supposed to be doing. And the Bible says a Saul came, a Saul's servants came around him. They realized something different about David. He is not a two-faced hypocrite. If he says he wants to do something, he's going to do it. And he's going to do it with the best attitude in front of the person asking him and everybody else. This is called wise behavior. If we're going to behave wisely, not only should we fear God and obey His commandments, but do so with the most willing attitude. I'll continue this message tonight. Father, we thank you for the Word of God this morning. Bless now the invitation, we pray. Holy Spirit, work in the hearts of people. And I pray, Lord, that the Word of God, as it, as it, as it has gone out, will, will come back, not void but will come back responsive from your people with, with humility. God bless our hearts. Help us in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, how many of you say, Preacher, I'm here this morning, and I know the Lord Jesus as my Savior. If I were to die, I'm 100% sure heaven is my home. Would you raise your hand? Oh, praise the Lord. I see many hands all across the church. I want to thank you for not being ashamed that you know Christ as your Savior. Praise the Lord. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe you're here this morning, and you say, Preacher, I don't, I, I don't know that I'm saved. I'm here this morning, but I'm not 100% sure. If I die, I would go to heaven. But you'd like me to pray for you. Would you raise your hand? You're here this morning, but you're not 100% sure. Heaven is your home, but you would like me to pray for you. Would you raise your hand? I see some hands being raised. I see an next hand being raised over here. Thank you. I see these hands being raised, and I, and I, need, I need help with them. Some of them need reassurances and, 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 and so on, so we need some people to talk with them. We have people going to you. They're going to come to you and they're going to have a word of prayer with you. Anybody else? I preach I'm here this morning. I don't know the Lord as my Savior. I want to join these folk, folks who's raising their hands. I want to get saved this morning. Would you raise your hand? If I were to die, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. But you would like me to pray for you. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? I see that one hand. Somebody's going to come to you right now to pray with you. I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. How many of you say, Preacher, I've accepted the Lord as my Savior, but since I've been saved, I've not been baptized. But I want to do that this morning. I, I am saved, but I've not been baptized, but I want to obey the Lord and do that this morning. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? You've been saved, but not baptized, but you can obey God and do that this morning. Would you raise your hand? Let's all stand. Please, let's all stand. Folks, let God's word speak to your heart. Why don't you go right where you are, right where you're standing, go to the Lord and ask Him to help you concerning what He spoke to you about. Receive God's word with humility and obey it.
quick humility. You go to the Lord and ask Him concern. I'm going to allow you, I'm going to be quiet so I can allow you to pray unto the Lord here and then I'll finish up. Father, we are so thankful to be in your house. Thank you for the wonderful songs we sang this, this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the people and their heart for souls and missions. I thank you for all the years of investing in your work. Thank you, my Lord. And God, I want to thank you for those who raise their hands to get saved, my Lord. I pray that they will come to know your Savior or assurance will help them this morning. Bless the soul owners with wisdom as they talk to them. And I also pray, Lord, for every decision that is being made this morning. Lord, I pray that every decision that is being made will honor you, please you, and glorify you. And let your will be done in every individual's life here today. In Jesus' name, amen.